my birthday, you know? I'm 13. <laughs> schnell, schnell, los! Geh rauf auf den Lastwagen! Schnell, auf was wartest du? Would you please give this to Anne? It's a little present for her birthday. I do hope she likes it. And this is from me, Otto. Thank you, Copois. Thank you, me. I'll give them to her at home. As I told you, we will soon be going into hiding. Would you be willing to assume the risk of looking after us and being our outside contact? Yes, we'll be needing you very soon. Sure, let me see them. Let me see them. <laughs> A little patience, Anne. I'll give you Meep and Copois's gifts in the meantime. Oh, yes, please. Take my case. Yes, Daddy. Thank you. Let's go inside now. Hello. Daddy, you're back at last. Thank heaven you're home safe. <laughs> How are you, Edith? Did you have a pleasant day, dear? Can I open my presents now, please, Daddy? Can I, please? Happy birthday, dearest Anne. Here, these are for you. Oh, thank you. The one with a pretty ribbon on it. Anne, open your presents carefully. If not, you'll spoil this lovely paper and the ribbon. Everything is so very precious during wartime. Yes, I know. A book on the cinema. Oh. Oh. That's Greta Garbo. And... And Fred Astaire. Oh, I really adore them. And, my dear... You should look at the package underneath it. Hmm. Oh, it's a dream come true. A diary. Oh, a diary. Oh. What a wonderful idea. Thank you, Daddy. It's from your mother as well. We both have the same idea. Don't you think you should thank her, too? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mummy. Take advantage of your carefree life while there's still time. Otto, 
I'm frightened. We were forced to leave Germany because of Hitler. And now they're making us wear yellow stars on our clothing in Holland. Yes, I know. The only way to escape the Nazis now is to hide from them, to disappear. What will become of us? This horrible war has me so worried for Anne and Margot. Edith, listen. You know as well as I do that it's too late and too dangerous for us to try to get out of Amsterdam. Kopois has brought supplies and furniture to our hideout. In addition, Meep is going to help us, so be brave. Mm -hmm. Friday, June 12th, 1942. You are the nicest present of all. I hope I shall be able to confide in you completely as I never have been able to do in anyone before. And I hope that you will be a great support and comfort to me. I want you to be the true friend for whom I have waited so long. And I'm going to call you Kitty. Because of the anti-Jewish decrees, Daddy can't take the tram like everyone else and has to go to his office at the other end of the city on foot. Ever since the German invasion in 1940, Amsterdam has been occupied by the army, and now we Jews must wear a yellow star on our clothing. If not, we can be arrested. My sister Margo and I have been transferred to the Jewish secondary school. Anyway, I'm so glad to be in the same class with Lise. Uh, sure, so and you know, everyone is saying you're in love with Harry Goldman. Oh, we've walked to school together once or twice, but that's all. Anyway, that's not what he says. <laughs> 3A minus 6AB plus 5B. Since you seem to be so well informed, tell me what else he's saying about me. He prefers you to Fanny, that she puts him to sleep. Hmm, give me that. You're jealous. Just because Harry and I are friends, doesn't mean the whole world jealous? has to know. You're joking. He's 16 and he thinks all your friends are children, but he likes you because you're his alarm clock. What? Good. Is that <laughs> My word, Miss Frank. Uh, why this sudden enthusiasm for algebra? <laughs> That's enough now. Quiet down. Who would like to solve a problem at the blackboard? No volunteers? Oh, why don't we have an expert solve it? Miss Frank? Come on, Come on, go up there. Come on, it's easy. You got it. I <laughs> Yeah, well, she, she's never been good at math this way. Maybe she was, help her. She wasn't listening. <laughs> she was really talking about I think she what? Have you lost your enthusiasm? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, vacation uh, soon and no uh, more uh, algebra. Uh, I'd love to go to the cinema again, but even that is forbidden to Jews. Just as it's forbidden to ride the trams, to use a car, to go out after eight at night, Jews must hand in their bicycles too. Being without a bicycle is one of the most awful things to bear if you live in Holland. <laughs> You know, it's a shame we weren't assigned to Carter Beach in this heat. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that was a close call. I'll never take my bicycle out again. Lise always says I'm afraid to do anything because it may be forbidden.
just a second. I'm coming. Yes? It's a labor camp call-up notice for Margot Frank. Dear Kitty, our friends Mr. Kopoy, Sweet, and her husband came to our house that same night to discuss what we should do. Margot, who's only 16, has received a call-up notice to go to a labor camp in Germany. She's very frightened because everyone knows what that means. Should we let her be doomed to this? Of course we won't let her go. Daddy has decided that all four of us will go into hiding tomorrow morning and not wait until they come to get us. Oh, I'm so frightened. We're here to help you, Mrs. Frank. Edith, please, we all need to show courage. This is the call-up notice. Beginning tomorrow, we're going to have to hide. Copois, will you still help? Of course, Otto. There, my bag is full. Are you ready to go, Edith? terrified for the children and for ourselves too i'm afraid of being stopped in the street we're giving up everything we have <laughs> edith follow the itinerary i gave you and don't forget to act as naturally as possible if you do everything will be just fine i assure you you go with Margot, and we'll meet you at the hiding place and just as we'd planned <laughs> there. 5.30 in the morning. We're taking as much as we possibly can. No Jew in our situation would dream of going out with a suitcase full of clothing. I'm not going to be able to walk normally with all these clothes on. It'd be warm at the North Pole. <laughs> it's time to go, girls. Are you ready? Oh. And don't forget to give the cat some milk before we go. Uh, but, Daddy, I was hoping I could take Mokja with me to the hiding place. Please, Daddy. Noah, I'm sorry, but it's impossible. It would be far too dangerous. We're already wearing yellow stars. We'd attract even more attention if we took him. I've left a note for the neighbors saying goodbye and asking them to look after him. So don't worry. Come now. Say goodbye to him. I understand. I'm sad too, but we have no choice. Mokja, you'll see. I promise to come back for you very soon. Come in. We really must go now. Get your things. There's no time to lose. Leave Mulcher there. You'll come with me, and Margot, you'll go with your mother. Now, we've a long walk, so let's hurry up. But, Daddy, where are we going? I think it's better that I don't tell you. Here, Margot. Take this. <laughs> I feel as if I'm in an adventure film. <laughs>
Warten Sie. Ah, verdammt nochmal. Du blödes Rindfee, kannst du nicht aufpassen? Ah. Ah. Go ahead. Come with me. Give me your things. Margo and Mrs. Frank are already here. Don't be afraid, dear. Go on. Um, Daddy. <laughs> so this is the mysterious hiding place? That's right, Anne. This is it. When Margot's call-up notice came, we realized we would have to go into hiding immediately. That's why things aren't quite set up. 
But why didn't anyone tell me our hiding place is right upstairs from your office? We had to make sure that very few people knew about it, and we thought it too big a secret for a little girl. I'm not a little girl anymore, and I know how to keep a secret. <laughs> <laughs> This will be your room. Huh. A dining room. Hmm. It's so steep. The pantry. What's in here? You can open it. Now listen to me, everyone. For as long as we're here, the most important rule is not to make a sound during office hours, not to walk around. No one must know that the Frank family is hiding in this house. Obviously, we won't be able to open the windows. We'll have to cover them so that the neighbors can not see us day or night. And you'll help me make some thick curtains, unpack the cartons, put things in the cupboards, and set up the beds and the bedding. Margot, you organize the kitchen. Yes, Daddy. Edith, you should rest. You look very tired. Does everyone understand? Let's begin. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Frank, I'll be doing the shopping every day, and I'll bring everything up just after midday, as soon as the employees leave for lunch. Oh, I don't know how to thank you. I don't know what we'd do without you, Meep. Oh, it's eight o'clock. I'd better go down to the office. I'll leave you now. The employees will be here any minute. Don't make any noise for the time being. Wait until noon or tonight to unpack all of your cartons. We're all deeply grateful to you, Meep. Let's hope that this horrible war will be over soon and that we can leave here. <sighs> Goodbye for now. <laughs> Everything will be fine, Mommy. You'll see. Yes. You won't believe me, Kitty, but there are even special hours for using the toilet. <gasps> what was that? Don't forget, not a sound. Hello, everyone. Hello. Well done. 
and we can't hear a thing from downstairs. Nothing. You do realize, Copois, it's not easy to sit still for so many hours at a time. Oh, I think it's all right for you to talk, as long as you remember to keep your voices down. It would certainly make the time go by faster, wouldn't it, Anne? Well, I hope you understood what Meep just said, Anne. You should use your sister as an example. Well, I think it's about time we made this place a little more livable. Anne? Is everything all right? Mm-hmm. You're hanging up pictures of your favorite movie stars and a picture of our Queen Wilhelmina, too. Yes. Everybody laughs at me because I'm so keen on the royal family. But I don't care. I just hope that this war is over very soon and that our beloved queen and her entire family come back from their exile in London safe and sound. Oh, Otto, how long do you think we'll have to stay here? Hmm. Margo, can you hear the church bells? Mm, I'm trying to sleep. Margo, I love them, especially at night, because you can count on them. What a beautiful sky. Be careful that no one sees you. Oh. Daddy said the Van Dan family will be coming into hiding with us. I hear that their son, Peter, is very nice. Nice looking, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never be able to sleep with those church bells ringing every 15 minutes. Look at the stars, Margot. Kitty, I can't tell you how oppressive it is never to be able to go outdoors. Also, I'm very afraid we'll be discovered and shot. That is not exactly a pleasant prospect. We have to whisper and tread lightly during the day. Otherwise, the people in the warehouse, which is just below, might hear us. We're almost there. Welcome to our home in hiding. Hello, Mrs. Frank. Hello, Otto. Hello. Thank you so much for taking us in. You know my wife, Edith, of course. This is our eldest daughter, Margot, and Anne, who is now 13 years old. And I would like you to meet Petronella, my wife. And this is Peter, our only son. And you'll never guess who's inside here. His cat, Mushi, he wouldn't leave him behind, and he has become part of the family. But you mean you brought a cat with you? Didn't anyone tell you that, that we don't want any cats? He won't be a burden to you at all. Peter will take care of him. The problem is he has to be fed. He's going to dirty things, and he could give us all away. I know how you feel, Anne, but Mushi will become your friend too, perhaps. But for now, why don't you welcome the Van Dance? Hello. Peter, the Van Dan son, is just 16. A kind of soft, shy, gawky boy. Can't expect much from his company. <coughs> Mr. Van Dan, what's been happening outside since we left? And do you know what's become of my best friend, Lies Gosler? What did you say? You heard me, and I really would like an answer, Mr. Van Dan. You know, there are thousands of call-up notices, raids, and arrests on the outside. It's a madhouse. I'm sorry, but I don't know a thing about your little friend, Lise. Why should we worry about others? We have enough problems of our own. Yes, you're right. Oh. 
What a nice large pile of clean sheets you've got. I would suggest that we use these first. What do you think? Hmm. I thought it would be much better if each family used its own sheets. I agree with Mummy. It would make more sense. Is that how little girls are supposed to talk to grown-ups? Is that the way you were taught to behave? First of all, I'm not a little girl, Mrs. Bandan. And secondly, don't forget you're in our home. Well, you ought to have been in our home. We were properly brought up. It's absurd that Anne is so frightfully spoiled. I wouldn't put up with it if Anne were my daughter. Hmm. Thank heavens I'm not. Hmm. Hmm. Let me see. We do use my lovely table service every day. Do you think that makes more sense? You really don't know people until after you've had a fight with them. Anyway, at least she's a good cook. Uh. Hello, girls. Your mother and I wanted to talk to you for a minute. I can understand how you feel about the Van Dans, but if each of us doesn't give just a little, our lives in this house are going to become unbearable. You should be grateful that we're together in a safe place. The situation is difficult enough. There's no sense in making things harder. But when she insults me, I can't just say nothing at all. Try to ignore what she says. I have no problem at all with the Van Dans. Try to be more like your sister. She doesn't look for trouble. She avoids it. Respect your elders. <sighs> And dear, please, I want you to show some self-control, that's all. I think of our hiding as a dangerous adventure, romantic and interesting at the same time. I can't grumble all day long. I've been given a lot, a happy nature, cheerfulness, and strength. Every day I feel that I'm developing inwardly. I see how beautiful nature is. Why then should I be in despair? There you are. You're always so kind and helpful, but... Go on, take it. Thank you. Oh, you needn't thank me. It's only natural. I'll deliver the potatoes to your office later as usual. Thank you. I have fewer and fewer ration tickets and things are more and more expensive. What's important is to keep your spirits up and never lose heart, right? One of these days, this damn war will end. Let's hope so. Ah, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Meep. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you? Oh, we're Did you have a pleasant day? Don't worry about us. <laughs> ah, Peter, help me, please. Oh, it's heavy. I found almost everything you asked me for, but it wasn't easy. I have a few surprises for you as well. This is oh, me. Thank you, Meep. Tobacco. Thank you so much. What else? And here's your movie magazine with all your favorite oh, film stuff. Thank you. I thought you might like this oh. autumn leaf as a present. Mm. Let me see. Wait. Oh, oh, no. Now look what you've done. Oh, I'm sorry, Anne. Now for the big surprise. Huh? Take it, Mr. Frank. Go on. Oh, I wonder what it is. Oh, it's a, it's a book. Perhaps you should open it. Oh, oh. oh. 
sleep. It's a little radio. How wonderful. Now we can listen to the BBC and Radio Orange for news of the free world instead of Nazi propaganda newspapers. It's forbidden to have a radio. So, on top of clandestine Jews, clandestine money for clandestine buying on the black market, we can add a clandestine radio. As the news from the outside gets worse, the radio helps to keep up our morale. This morning, English and American troops landed in Tunis, Algiers, Casablanca, and Oran. Ah, oh, the end. I told you we had to remain optimistic. Of the end. Uh, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. You have just heard the voice of Winston Churchill announcing to the free world a decisive step towards the liberation of Europe. Algiers is here. The Allies are now in control of North Africa. The next step strategically should be in the Mediterranean region. An invasion of Italy, perhaps. That's all well and good, but Italy's far from here. Yes, she's right. Not a day goes by without listening to the voice of the free world from London, which keeps our spirits up in the hope of being liberated very soon. The other good news is that Meep is going to spend the night here. You can't imagine how happy I am that you're spending the night in the secret annex with us. I am too, Anne. Look! I saved the ribbon from my birthday present wrapping. Everyone laughed at me. They said I was doing up my hair to look like a movie star. I have lots of other colors too, so I can change whenever I feel like it. I'm glad you care about your appearance, even in hiding. It's a very good thing. I would love to enjoy myself again, ride my bicycle, breathe in real fresh air. Mm -hmm. I want to dance and travel and see the whole world. I know, and I'm sure this horrible war will be over soon, Ed. Hmm. Wait, let me do that. Your hair is so soft. Do you brush it often? Mm-hmm. There. Please, I really want to know, have my friends and their families gone into hiding too? I don't know, and it's too dangerous to ask around. What's happening outside? Well, the Nazis round up Jews both day and night. They're arrested in their houses and on the street as well. They have to leave everything behind. Their possessions are confiscated. If they refuse, they're beaten or even killed immediately. They have no choice at all. You're all safe here in the secret annex, as you call it, but you've got to be very careful. Oh, Beep. Beep, I love you so much. I'm afraid they'll arrest you because of us. Beep, I'm scared. <sighs> Mr. Frank, you saved my life. Thank you. The danger is the same for eight as for seven. Consider this your home. You know my wife. Dear Kitty, great news. We're taking in an eighth person. Mr. Dussel, a dentist. I'm not so crazy about sharing my room with a stranger, but you got to be prepared to make sacrifices for a good cause. Anyway, they didn't give me a choice. Every morning, he does what he calls exercise. Sure. And guess where he prefers spending his time? In the water closet, three, four, five times a day, 15 minutes each time, while the whole annex waits, begging him hey, to come out. Uh, my turn. No. Do you think he cares? Uh-uh, not a bit. What? A cat? <coughs> but I... I'm allergic to cats. Get that animal away from me quickly. Peter, I think you had better take Mushy upstairs right away. I'm asking you to get rid of that cat immediately. Throw him out, you hear? I don't want to see him again. Is that clear? Do you understand? Peter, you heard. What are you waiting for? Go and get rid of Mushy, I said. He's making Mr. Dussel ill. Go on. Go on now. Get that cat out of here. No, Peter, stay here. Don't listen to him. Mr. Dussel, I would like to tell you something once and for all. You've only just arrived here and you've imposed your schedule on all of us as well as your ridiculously annoying habits. 
Mushi's not only a good pet, but he eats mice, which is a big help. Oh, dare a pretentious little 13-year-old girl try to teach me a lesson. That's enough. I can't bear another minute of this. And I, Mr. Dussel, I cannot bear using the desk where I do my writing under the pretext of needing it to work on your silly so-called thesis. Oh. Get out of my sight right now. Ouch. And not another word. This time you've gone too far. Apologize immediately to Dr. Dussel. And don't let it happen again. Dr. Dussel, please forgive me. I got carried away. Hmm. 